And welcome to a pond further review. I'm Josh Aubrey. Plenty to get to in this week's show. The Georgia Southern Eagles now two and one under head coach Chad Lunsford in the bowl games, three and one overall in their third straight bowl. They pull off a big victory in the New Orleans Bowl, winning 38 to three over Louisiana Tech. Shy Wirtz, questionable as he missed the last two games or most of the last two games of the season. He comes out. Looks like nothing was wrong with him as he rushes for three touchdowns, throws for another, and being named the MVP of the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. We'll hear from him, from Coach Lunsford, and a couple of the other players. We'll also send you out for some highlights of that game. Uh, elsewhere back home, the Portal Panthers playing in their first ever season of flag football made it all the way to the state championship game at the uh, old Turner Field in Atlanta. the old uh, It's now Georgia State's home for football. We'll send you out for highlights of their game with Calvary. Unfortunately, the Panthers come up on the short end of a six to nothing score, had a chance to score late in the game. An interception ended up doing them in. We'll send you out for highlights and hear from head coach Jay Reddick. We'll also send you out for some highlights of Statesboro High hosting their annual Gentlemen's Classic, the Portal Panthers in action there as well. All that and more coming up on Upon Further Review. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888 or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. The Medical Center Pharmacy on Grenade Street is proud to be your Health Mart Pharmacy in Statesboro. The Medical Center Pharmacy, locally owned and serving this community for 50 years, is open 364 days a year. The pharmacists at Medical Center know there's nothing more important than your family's well-being. That's why they take the time to know their customers, explain their medications, and answer any questions. The Medical Center Pharmacy, your Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Well, the Georgia Southern Eagles looking to win their third bowl game uh, overall and the second under head coach Chad Lunsford as they head down to New Orleans to play in the Arnell Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Typically, uh, the Superdome in New Orleans holds over 74,000 fans, only 3,000 allowed for the game, about 1,000 of those being Georgia Southern fans. Let's send you out for some highlights from the game. The New Orleans Superdome to site, 3-2-1. The New Orleans Superdome, the site for the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Georgia Southern taking on Louisiana Tech. The big question who would be starting at quarterback? Well, that would be Shy Wirtz, and he'd have a great game. On the opening drive, Malik Murray off the Wirtz pitch. He'll take this one down the right sidelines, getting deep into Bulldog territory, and then capping the drive. It's the senior, Shy Wirtz, in for the score. Georgia Southern takes a 7-0 lead. The Eagle defense playing tough throughout the game. The Bulldogs get deep, but this one picked off by Justin Birdsong at the 22. And he's enjoying the turnover chain. A little bit later, it's Derek Canteen jumping into the Eagle record books. He ties the school record for interceptions, and he's leading the NCAA this year as well. The turnover chain with a busy night. First play of the second quarter, Shy Wirtz showing no shoulder discomfort on the perfect pass to Caleb Hood. 65 yards, and it's 14-0 Eagles. Anthony Wilson Getting in on the fun, he gets the interception at the 25-yard line. The Eagles 
third of the half. They'd add another in the second half as well. Lead the nation in turnover margin. The defense continues to harass the Bulldogs. C.J. Wright with the odd celebration here afterwards. And then back on offense, the pitch to Darius Lewis. He picks up an eagle first down. And then it's Wirtz breaking free. He goes 37 yards for his second score of the game. The Eagles extend their lead to 21 to nothing. Louisiana Tech adds a field goal before the half, but the Eagles up 21-3 at the half. To the second half we go. Chad Lunsford continues to like what he sees. Wirtz throwing on the run to Sean Pelkerson who looks like he's going to go all the way in for the score, but he's ruled down at the one. No problem as Wirtz goes in for his third touchdown of the game, and it's 28-3 Eagles. Freshman Jalen White getting in on the fun. The Eagles rushing for over 320 yards in the game. To the fourth we go, and Alex Rayner gets on the scoreboard as he hits the short field goal to extend the lead to 31-3. To More from the Eagle defense, Gavin Agcock with the hit for a loss and he and Justin Ellis celebrate. And then it's right again. And then take a look at his moves. Speaking of moves, the Eagles happy to see their future in Gerald Green here with 55 of his team high, 108 yards rushing. Not able to get in the end zone this time, but a couple plays later, he'll go in for the final points of the game as the Eagles save their best for last, capturing their third bowl victory in school history, winning the New Orleans Bowl by a final count of 38-3. And after the game, we had a chance to talk with Coach and some of the players about the victory. Man, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to play because I told him, like, I ain't want to play if I was going to have to get the shot. And, uh, you know, so I just went to treatment super hard. <laughs> did, did super hard treatment all week, man. So again, shout out to Miss Brandy. Uh, you know, she, she, she got me right. She was, she was on me, you know what I'm saying, helped me get through it. I was frustrated, but she was with me the whole time. Um, and, man, uh, you know, when the, when the time came for me to make the decision, I felt good. I woke up this morning, you know, and I was in that mode. And, you know, well, see what happened. Got it up. Matt. I don't really even know how to feel right now. Uh, I don't really. It's, I'm a loss for words. Like, it's been it's been a journey. It's been a journey, man. And try not to get, try not to cry for real. <laughs> uh, it's been a long journey, man. I'm just happy it ended the way it did. Don't really know uh, what's next, and just you know, trying to enjoy the moment. But uh, for me, it's I know when our defense is gonna have a great day if we stop them on the first drive. I don't know why it's been like that, um, but you know, we stop somebody on the first drive. You know, we're we're, we're locked in, ready to go. And you know, as soon as I've seen us get turnover after turnover, I'm like, hey guys, you know, let's keep on around. We having fun creating turnovers. Uh, we might be number one in turnovers game now. Maybe are we number one in turnovers game? So I mean, we um. You know, we start off the season not really, you know, doing great as a defense. So just coming together and being able to, um, you know, have a have a huge um, emphasis on making sure, you know, we stop them as defense. You know, it, it was it was great. Excited for our football team. Um, you know, uh, great way to end the 2020 season. Uh, obviously, with a bowl championship. Uh, obviously, the overall record with five losses is not what we expect at Georgia Southern. And, um, you know, we, we want to make sure that next year that we do better, right, and do better. But I can't take this away from our guys because I'm going to tell you something, between social injustice, uh, between a pandemic, uh, not having them during the offseason and watching this team really stick together and stay together and play 12 regular season games, um, you know, uh, have a have a game scheduled with UMass in the middle of the season that you're not even expecting, um, you know, to go to Army when that was not even on the schedule, um, you know, to be able to go out and finish this way. Uh, I'm very proud of our guys um, and I'm very proud of the way they finished. 
Um, you know, that was an awesome job today. Offense, defense uh, did give up a couple long returns and special teams today that uh, ended up giving them that three points. Um, and that's something that, you know, I'm going to take uh, responsibility for. But I, I got to make sure our special teams are better than what, what they've been. But not to take away from this, man, 38 to three, uh, old champions, uh, La Tech, man, hats off to them. Good team, good coaches, um, and they did a great job. Uh, but just really proud of our guys and what they did today. Me and Shy had not even talked about it. Um, I saw the way he was talking to the guys before the game in the locker room, and I, I just felt like, oh, he's about to do it. He's about to go. Um, and the decision got made right before we went out to pregame warmups. You know, just just for him to be able to go out that way and finish that way, um, just because of the warrior he's been for Georgia Southern football. Um, he's been here through the bad times. He's been here through the good times. Um, he's been through here through the up, ups and downs. Um, he's, he's battled adversity off the field, battled adversity on the field. Um, and just for him to come up and step up for his brothers today and go out there and play um, and lead us to a bold victory, um, you know, I think that's just another thing to add to his legacy at Georgia Southern. You know, these seniors, the, you know, the big thing is a lot of them were here, the ones that redshirted were here in 2016. Um, and, and a lot of them were here in 2017. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we can't forget where we came from. Um, you know, we, we had immediate success with the 10 and three season. Um, but for these guys to go to three straight bowls and, and obviously, you know, we would have loved to won them all and we didn't. Um, and we were in position to win every game this year. Um, and we weren't able to finish off some games. Uh, you know, we were sitting at six and two and feeling pretty good about things. And um, then the injury bug started hitting us. Um, we had a lot of next men up that, that stepped up. Um, but we weren't able to close out games, and a lot of it had to do with depth. Um, but again, that's not an excuse. Uh, we got to continue to uh, just continue to preach our, preach our guys about finishing. And that's what I saw tonight. You know, to me, this was a great way to finish 2020 and an awesome way to start 2021 uh, because uh, we started the game and we finished the game. And stay with us. More football coming up, this time flag football over in Atlanta. My Queensboro banker is Cheryl Quick. Blanchard Equipment Company has 16 locations. Queensboro has homegrown values just like us. They get heavily involved in every community. And that means strong customer service. They've been around a long time, just like John Deere. When you run across the bank like that, you stick with them. I sure would like to own one of these John Deeres. Well, we can sure make that happen. Oh, well. Queensboro is your community bank. Queensboro National Bank and Trust. Give the gift of Eagle merchandise this Christmas with a present from the University Store on the Georgia Southern Campus or their Savannah location. Featuring plenty of jackets, shirts, and sweatshirts to keep you warm this winter, the University Store is open Monday through Fridays from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. all the way up until the holiday break at the Statesboro and Savannah Store locations. So for all those Eagle fans, don't forget to stop by the University Store with two locations to serve you in Statesboro and in Savannah. Well, in their first year, the Portal Panthers, pretty special season in flag football as they made it all the way to the state championship game, which was played in Atlanta at the old Turner Field. Let's send you out for highlights and hear from head coach Jay Reddick. Facing off against fellow region rival Calvary Day in the first ever GHSA State Championship Monday at Center Park Stadium in Atlanta. The Panthers hitting the field before some of the Panther faithful making the trip. Portal's defense stepping up early on. First, it's Glendia Lowe with the stop. Next, the Panthers doing a great job playing assignment football on the option. Kelsey Williams pulling a flag. On offense, the double pass coming from Williams to Riley Lamb. Over to Brianna Milton for a first down. Williams then hits Blair Brannon as the two-minute offense looking good. Emma Yates next at quarterback to Lamb. She gets to the 16, a holding call, moves it to the eight, but the Panthers unable to get into the end zone. And we go to the half with no score. Moving ahead to the second half and the Cavs showing their speed as Michaela Primo 
gets ahead for a Cavalier first down. Next, the pass will go to Katie Ellenwood. And she fights her way inside the 10. But the portal defense stiffens from there. Melanie West with the sack. And the score remains 0-0. Portal goes three and out. And then on the ensuing punt, the Cavs with a nice return. This one going deep into portal territory. And then from the eight, Hannah Kale to Ellenwood open in the end zone. And the Cavaliers would take a six to nothing lead. Portal trying to answer late in the game. Yates to Williams for a first down. And then a crazy play. Yates pass is tipped, caught by Milton, who turns it upfield, and it looks like the game would be tied. But Portal will be called for an illegal block. No touchdown. And instead, it's fourth and six. Yates then hits Williams again for a first down. She gets inside the 15, but two plays later, Yates looking for Williams, but this is picked off by a leaping Nevia Hamilton at the five. The Cavaliers able to run out the clock from there, and they'd win six to nothing. You know, we just couldn't get anything going on offense. Um, uh, you know, you don't put any points up, you're not going to win. But, um, you know, you just got to work in the offseason and uh, work on the offense a little more and just try to improve for next year. What we had dialed up just didn't work, whether it was a bad throw or ran the wrong routes, you know, it just didn't work out. Still a great accomplishment for the girls. You know, nobody's, no team's ever been in this spot from Portal. They, they had a great season. Gave it everything they had. And stay with us. Up next, we'll visit with the Portal Panther basketball team who are playing in part of the Gentleman's Classic and Statesboro High basketball as well. Refused isn't just an offer, it's a way of business and has been for over 100 years. No banks, no ridiculous credit requirements, just local Badcock store owners who treat you right and give you credit when others won't. It's never been easier to express your style and love your home. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998. Providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy, in-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests, and ultrasounds, and in-house labs. Featuring nurse practitioner Melissa Beasley, Family Internal Medicine of Statesboro can accommodate same day or next day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine and Associates of Statesboro, where we care. Well, after each Christmas, Statesboro High hosts their annual Gentlemen's Classic. This year featuring four teams, Statesboro, Columbia, Burke County, and Portal. Let's send you out for some highlights from Statesboro and Portal. Statesboro opening up their annual Gentlemen's Classic as they host their county rivals in the Portal Panthers. The Panthers hot out of the gates. Elijah Coleman driving strong to the basket. He draws the foul and somehow manages to get this one to fall. Next, it's Joseph Thomas with the pull-up jumper. Portal would open up with a 21-7 lead as Coleman drives and finishes with his left hand. He'd have 16 in the game. Statesboro fighting back behind the long ball. Kobe Altman plays beat the clock. Next, it's Albert Michael from the top of the key. Then Garrison Littles left alone as Statesboro gets within two. The comeback continues as Altman drives the baseline and finds Tim Thomas for the easy two inside. 
Littles then off the inbounds to James Thomas, two of his 12 points. Tim Thomas adding 12 and 10 rebounds, including the three-point play opportunity. Statesboro by two at the half. Second half, Portal trying to stay within striking distance as Thomas hits a couple more jumpers. He'd finish with 14 points. Amir Jackson trying to pick up some slack here with two off the glass. But Statesboro in command. Leslie Black, the nice look to Thomas for two more. James Thomas continues to have success in the lane as he throws this one in. Almost a no-look shot. The Blue Devils showing their depth as Raylan Grant hits in transition. More from Statesboro on the break. Henry Humphreys goes strong for the hoop and the foul. Statesboro outscores Portal 23-12 in the third. More in the fourth quarter. Altman ahead of the pack for the layup. Cameron Michael later will get the friendly roll on the three-pointer in the corner. And finally, Littles to Altman for the hoop and the foul as Statesboro rolls 73-55. to and That's going to wrap it up for this week's show. We'd like to wish you a happy new year. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next week.